उसके बियॉन्ड भी अगर कुछ नहीं हो रहा है देन आई देन आई फेल कि बॉस इट इज़ नॉट अबाउट मी इट इज़ समथिंग एंड विच आई कैन नॉट टू एनी थिंग दैट्स वेर आई गॉट स्टक कि भाई ये क्यों है आई नेवर हैड दोज आंसर्स सो हितेश इट बिन टेन ईयर्स आई वर्क देर एंड इन द टेन ईयर वॉट रियली पिंच मी टूवर्ड्स द लेटर पार्ट ऑफ द करियर वॉज अपग्रेडेशन as in in terms of the designation in terms of the promotion in terms of the acknowledgement the interesting thing is i was working and the work was appreciated and i re- also received the rewards and awards one thing is what was not happening was the promotion i joined it as senior executive there right yeah and uh, after 4 year 4 to 5 years uh, there was a new t- immediate boss that person wanted to harmonize the team so in that context my designation got upgraded to assistant manager okay Okay, but that assistant manager stayed with me for a very long time. And is that normal in 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 the company or in any kind of career path? Or if you do your maybe MBA where I was, I felt I deserved a higher upgradation, and I was stuck there probably for longer time. That's the where the happiness quotient started to begin to drop. Where I realized that boss, what's happening? It's been three, four years now, and I've been in the same designation. But then there was something which was not making me leave. At the same time, some one part of me wanted to leave, and one part of me wanted to stay for something. And even in the same organization where we joined together, people were getting good growth, and that's where also I felt like, what is happening? Why I am so stuck? Like, what is it? I need to move. But सब कुछ जानते हुए भी नहीं हो रहे थे एक्शन. I was not able to take action. So appraisals were the painful. Most of the time, I used to go with the hope that this time. ये रेटिंग मिलेगा ये हो जाएगा एंड वेन द डोर इज टू शट ऑन माई फेस एंग नो बॉस यू नॉट गेटिंग प्रमोशन वॉट एवर द रीजन इज दो वेरी टफ डेज इट रियली डीमोटिवेटेड एंड आई वॉज लाइक कि वॉट वॉट वाई हैव बिन रिजेक्टेड दैट फीलिंग ऑफ रिजेक्शन वॉज वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग हाई एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक माई नेम इज हितेश भाटिया एंड आई एम योर होस्ट फॉर टूडे Uh, we talk about stories of inspiration of transformation uh, we talk about stories of how we feel in our jobs how we feel in our career and i often say this what we want is so unique to us um, it's so much what our desires are and not having that every single day is what makes our life miserable a lot of times we laugh at ourselves we think it's okay if we don't have it because it's such a small element but it really becomes our reality every single day every time we breathe that becomes our reality we have with us today in the house mukta paratkar uh, hi mukta hi itesh welcome to joining hands thank you so good to have you here and thank you so much for taking time out uh, you know to be with us on this rainy day over here how far have you traveled to come here almost two and a half hours wow it took it took that long <laughs> yes because of the traffic yes crazy i couldn't imagine that Yeah, but it's been raining all day. It's raining cats and dogs. I can't even hear sitting in the studio what's happening outside. So if if Bombay is drowning, let's hope it's not. We won't even know till we get done with this shoot. So Mukta, why don't you start by telling us a little about yourself? Uh, where did you grow up? What was life like growing up? Are you have you always lived in Bombay? Yeah. I also thought that okay. Please, please go on. Sorry. So I'm Pakka Mumbai kar. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> do you love Vada Pav? Yes, obviously. So, Vada Pav is like a very dear thing, especially while growing age, because our school Vada Pav is very famous. School Vada Pav. Uh, yeah. Oh my God, I love Vada Pav. Yeah. Where where was this? Where did you school? Uh, Palate of Vidyalay. Where is that? Mille Palate. And that's a good Vada Pav. Yeah. So that uh, it had a legacy school? of hundred years. That guy used to make Vada Pav even during the, my mom's time. Wow, is he so, yet there? Uh, he is no more, but then the legacy continues, and okay, that's a famous. I'm going to make a list of Vada Pav. Okay. Sorry, sorry. But please go on. Yeah, so I spent entire life in Mumbai, living in different parts of Mumbai, mm-hmm. and uh, I love Mumbai. It's like a very dear uh, city and very uh, colorful life here. City of dreams, as they call it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. But I think it's also one of the most. Uh, it also has a lot of pain, right? The city. Um, maybe yes, or maybe no. Perspective, right? Right. Yeah, it's a different perspective. Yeah. So you you've uh, schooled college all in Bombay. Yes. And I, I know you did your MBA after that. Yes. Where did you do your MBA from? Before MBA, I actually started with uh, my dream was to become a doctor. Oh. So. Uh, that part I didn't know. <laughs> 
yes so in 12th standard i attempted um, the cet i couldn't crack and then again i repeated and then that also i couldn't crack so i eventually landed up doing a microbiology course okay. and then a food technology course and i worked briefly for some organization and that's where i took a break and i thought oh i need a masters in maybe business administration so that's where the mba thing happened right and where did you mba from mba from mumbai university from, from bandra yeah bandra okay. college yeah. okay and uh, what did you start doing after that professionally so you had a microbiologist and a food technologist and then you started a and after mba the life change oh, <laughs> because okay. i shifted my career i always, always wanted to be into market research space so i worked briefly with the agency and then on the client side so that's where my journey started with my passion with my uh, the area of interest i would say after mba in and marketing and what what kind of work does a research person do so uh, well, like marketing research yes it was a marketing research consumer research on the consumer okay. side so i worked uh, across different categories now and uh, it was very interesting to meet consumers to understand what they think how they think mm-hmm. and it's a lot of learning a lot of data this so this was with the cosmetics company that yeah yeah okay. so i worked there for a brief period of time uh, entire career span so i worked more than 14 years now and most of my time in my career i have spent with one of the leading company in the cosmetic domain so how, how long were you working with them uh, almost more than 10 years wow that's a long in time in the same company that's a long time yeah so your role typically was to meet consumers understand and then give that feedback to better the product is that typically what it was yes absolutely and um, it's an interesting career i never thought about it but you actually are the medium because the company makes the new products based on what you give them and did you enjoy what you did in your job absolutely because i also realized that i am so fond of meeting people mm-hmm. new people because that's where we learn we get ideas and you know th- that's the best part i you know in my entire journey i would say you know interacting with people meeting them so that's something which i really enjoyed and did you did you enjoy your career as such so there is there are when i started my journey yes it was a very high because it was like a dream thing i uh, many dreams got fulfilled when in the initial part of the thing because the company gave me a, a opportunity to travel abroad and that was a kind of a dream come true because before joining there i'd never had a passport also oh my god okay so what kind of a family background do you come from was it like a middle class upper middle class yeah so i um, i come from a middle class background and uh, my father when he came he he is basically from the uh, he, his family stayed in a village so he came from village and he had a very tough childhood so when he came to mumbai he actually came with one jackfruit one jackfruit yeah because that time the things and situations were very different and he had so many uh, so many siblings and uh, they didn't have so much even amount to pay to the bus so he had two jackfruits one he gave to the conductor and he came in <laughs> came and he uh, stayed his entire life in mumbai where he did his schooling and you know from those days to then he he was working in bank and now he's retired and now he's gone back to its ro- his roots and he's doing farming and you know is following his passion is he, is he farming jackfruits jackfruits mangoes and oh, many wow. more things but you can't even imagine right what it would be to carry two jack and they're heavy right normally to carry two jackfruits here bus conductor when he was just 8 year old when he was 8 years old so who did he come and stay with over here did he have family here no so that time there was a different organ a different way of uh, culture there where people from different parts in the relative or community they used to stay at one place and they used to do entire home kind of a uh, stuff whatever work was there the people used to give them food and shelter so and that's how we started that's how and he had different days visiting different people and at times even he had tough days when he slept on the cut off shivaji park wow so from there he started his journey and then um, he worked in a later stage he worked uh, in one of the uh one of the bank in the, in the banking industry and uh, after retirement obviously he is enjoying his uh, passion going back to his roots to farming yeah interesting and he must be really proud of you to do your mba yeah and you must be proud of yourself <laughs> yes absolutely so so let's move now what happened when you started working how was your working life like so working life uh, was very interesting as i said but you know it 
really takes some time to shook yourself and to understand what is actually happening. Because when your happiness quotient, some point of time begins to drop. So that's where the first thing where the quotient starts dropping and you don't understand what is happening. And then it took me so many years to discover what is happening. And then I realized, you know, so uh, Hitesh, it'd been 10 years I worked there. And in the 10 year, what really pinched me towards the later part of the career was uh, the upgradation. As in, in terms of the designation, in terms of the promotion, in terms of the acknowledgement. The interesting thing is I was working and the work was appreciated. And I re also received the rewards and awards. But somewhere what I was stuck so we were saying that um, you were saying that ten years of working and no um, no yeah there were awards and there were rewards appreciation yes but still there was no one thing is was not happening was the promotion so I just want to understand that but better you know जब आप आप MBA करते हो and uh, you know you do your MBA in a particular college and this is campus placement no no so you moved out of him because you already had the experience actually. So I you, worked with a boutique agency before. Oh I yes, you mentioned. Sorry, yeah. my mistake. You mentioned yeah. that, and then you applied to this company. Yeah. And you and what what designation did you join them as? I joined it as senior executive there. Right. Yeah. And uh, after four year, four to five years, uh, there was a new t immediate boss. So uh, that person wanted to harmonize the team. Mm -hmm. So in that context, my designation got upgraded to assistant manager. Okay. okay. But that assistant manager stayed with me for a very long time. And is that normal in, in, in the company or in any, any career path? Or the, if you do your Maybe MBA where I was, I, I felt I deserved a higher upgradation and I was stuck there probably for a longer time. And that's where I, that, that's the, where the happiness quotient started to begin to drop, where I realized that was what's happening. Like, you know, it's been three, four years now and I've been in the same designation. But is that normal? I mean, you know, I'm just trying to understand that in, in the market out there, how often do people get promoted? No, if you are in the right place and the right things, then uh, I think every three years, usually people get upgradation or a promotion kind of so thing. So you join as a senior executive. Yeah. And that's 10 years. So that's technically three promotions. You should have probably been a senior manager. Absolutely. And after that is an AVP or a VP? General manager general or something. Manager. Yeah. So you, had been a, you should have been a general manager. If not, then at least the senior manager. Of course. And it's nothing to do with your work because you're being, you're getting Absolutely. rewards, you're yeah. getting awards. Yeah. And, and what happens? How do you feel when that happens? So every time uh, when there was something where visitors or some kind of special meetings used to be there or something, you know, there was some kind of a roadmap projection of the team. And every time when I used to see, okay, where I am and okay, my name and okay, assistant manager. So that's where it started pinching, where things were highlighted. And then somewhere in the back of the mind, I used to feel, oh, what, you know, globally at the same level, what people are doing are, are different design designation wise, they are in a different way. But why it is, you know, not reflecting in my uh, thing. So that's where the kind of unhappiness thing started sipping in into. Interesting. Uh, so yeah. you also spoke about happiness quotient. Were you thinking happiness quotient back then also? Probably was not even aware <laughs> till okay. the time when this things came into my awareness and that's the realization first came ki oh I'm still not upgraded. Do, do you have a memory of when that realization came? Mm, it might be not one particular event, maybe the series of events. Sure. Any 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 one particular event? Uh, specifically like you know when I felt that I deserved to be in the uh, managerial role and when there were new openings and when they were hiring people who were less experienced. And as managers. Yeah. Wow. But if there are some incidents, hai, you know, maybe a meeting, maybe an award ceremony. And let, let's say, do you remember an, an appraisal? Because I'm sure there are appraisal review meetings, right? <laughs> that was the most uh, difficult times of the year. So we used to have almost in November, December times and the result would come in Jan. So I remember the last, especially last three appraisal where I had, uh, by the time I was very firm and I, I learned how to go and pitch yourself and talk about your, whatever you did and, you know, make an effort. So I was making an active effort to pitch what, myself. What year was this? This was a 2020. Okay. 19 or 20. 19, it started with 19 and then, yeah, 20. So you were like adamant, this year I will take title. 
सो नो इवन टाइटल लेके रहेंगे ना आई ऑल्सो हैड अ वेरी कंस्ट्रक्टिव डिस्कशन लाइक वॉट शुड वी डू लाइक वॉट आर यू एक्सपेक्टेड आउट ऑफ मी सो दैट आई कैन पुट माई एनर्जीज देयर एंड यू नो वी अग्रीड ऑन सम गोल्स और डिलीवरेबल्स एंड इट वॉज इट वॉज फ्रॉम दैट लेवल बिकॉज यू नो आई वॉज वेरी वेरी वेल नोन फॉर एज अ पर्सन टू टेक रिसीव फीडबैक एंड इम्प्लीमेंट दैम so that was kind of a strength and when i put that it was like okay now i'm going to work on this and uske baad every year when you face that kind of a appraisal and you know when you said okay ye ye hua to ho jayega and last consecutive two years it happened that okay ye hua hai but sorry any any reason given why sorry <laughs> reasons were not very convincing okay so sometimes they were just given as a excuse or something but then i again got to know okay it is because till that time i was feeling oh i am not performing oh probably something is to look within me but then eventually i learned it is not about me it is also about the entire dynamics and what things are happening beyond my control and beyond my understanding so that's what it started bothering me more and more ki i am to taking all effort i am trying to improvise everything is happening but why are I'm not seeing that change. Why it is not reflecting? And uh, Hitesh, thankfully, at the same junction of the period of time, what happened is because of my curiosity and because of my passion in the past lives of the world, I met a hyp- hypnotherapist. Right. And I underwent some few sessions, and I loved it. And then I said, okay, I want to learn this. And that's where I started my journey on the therapy line, where you know. uh this thing happened and even the past life regression tasso a course happened mm-hmm. and during uh, the period there was a lot of self work happening but you you also said that you were already self aware right because you uh, like a lot of times when i i see people who who they feel they're not growing they would blame the environment the company the culture but you were already very aware where you said that what am i not doing right am i not working hard enough was it I a self doubt uh, no it was aware that i am taking whatever efforts i need but then i started looking beyond ki oh because of x y z things mera promotion nahi ho raha hai okay that that awareness came till that time i was like okay everyone is taking uh, effort everyone is having a goal objective that this year it is, it is going to happen but wo awareness aa gaya ki boss mere sirf se effort hai samne wale ke effort nahi hai that awareness it came right no but usse pehle i am talking about usse pehle when um before you started regression before you did all of yeah, that yeah this is before the regression okay. that awareness came ki samne wala banda is not ha is not kuch to issue hai yeah. the relationship dono side se taal mel kuch to hai kuch to nahi hai to matlab maine effort kar diya mera i put in my heart yeah. and i'm doing well right because Absolutely. i'm sure you said you got awards you were recognized yeah uske beyond bhi agar kuch nahi ho raha then i then i felt ki boss it is not about me it is something and which i cannot do anything that that's where i got stuck ki bhai ye kyu hai i never had those answers so when the journey of learning and when i was doing self work i got answers but when you were when you didn't have the answers what was an emotional state i was feeling stuck i was not able Did you speak to, to your parents yes and what 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 kind of support you got from them so they understood me and uh, they also sh- suggested you know you should look out you mm-hmm. know there are so many things to of do course, why so are you companies. stuck yeah yeah i agree but then there was something which was not making me leave at the same time some one part of me wanted to leave and one part of me wanted to stay for like something you said stuck you were stuck you yeah. can't move it's like you know how we put those chuhe ka traps and the chuha attack <laughs> jata hai udhar yeah. it, it was so, that that a kind of feeling yeah what what else happened at that time was it painful I started feeling. Uh, sometimes I used to feel like, okay, I'm an important person. I'm doing all the things, things. But at the same time, whenever it is to come to title, I used to feel, oh, ये तो बहुत shameful वाली बात हो गई ना कि I'm not in that kind I'm of. Uh, yeah. And what about your your batch mates from MBA? I normally have this group, right? Where you yeah. meet up. Yeah. Were they all managers? yeah managers are even high uh, levels and even in the same organization where we joined together people were getting good growth and that's where also i felt like what is happening why mm. i am so stuck like what is it i need to move but sab kuch jante hue bhi nahi ho rahe the action i was not able to take action and how, how long did this phase last for 3 years 
That's a long time. Yeah, almost three years. So being stuck for three years, did you try giving interviews? I was, but nothing happened. It was not happening, and uh, again I had hope. कि ये साल हो जाएगा ये साल हो जाएगा आई डोंट नो टिल समथिंग हैपेंड या या एब्सोल्युटली एंड व्हाट इज व्हाट आर एनी पेनफुल इंसिडेंसेस वेरी पेनफुल डिड यू क्राई डिड यू ब्रेक डाउन सो अप्रेजल्स व द पेनफुल मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम आई हैज टू गो विद अ होप कि इस बार ये रेटिंग मिलेगा ये हो जाएगा एंड व्हेन द डोर इज टू शट ऑन माय फेस सेइंग नो बॉस यू आर नॉट गेटिंग प्रमोशन व्हाटएवर द रीजन इज those were the very tough days like it really demotivated and i was like hey, what what why i am being rejected that feeling of rejection was very strong D- did you have a confidant like a friend yes and what did she do you like cry and you reach out to her yeah that that used to happen quite often or maybe during those difficult days can you can you take out her name over here are you okay saying that who your friend was So yeah, Anu was my friend, and uh, so I used to share a lot, and uh, she used to also, you know, equally analyze the situation from the different perspective, not just mine, not just because she's my friend, but even in the other perspective, and she used to give me inputs. But that we did for a couple of years. But one point, even even she agreed that yes, like you know, something is something is n- not right here. So she was more. Did she sympathize more with you? Like you know, what kind of friend was she? Do pagal hai? Is that thodi hota hai? No, no. She understood. She, she understood because she saw my journey, and we worked together. So she was mm-hmm. quite understanding. And wherever, wherever I needed an improvement, she was the first one to share the inputs and you know tell me. Chote chote input bhi ho, so she used to give me and you know she she was the first one who actually used to tell me. No, ye karna hai, boss. Ye nahi karna hai. That way. Do you, Do you have any idea of how painful it was? I mean. You know, when you spoke to your parents, did you feel like running away, go on holidays? They, they just tell me just after the episode, I'm taking a holiday. Mm, no, I would not say it was to that extent, but yeah, somewhere I was thinking what I'm doing in life. So, what is it like? You know, you is there a specific date set for appraisal? But it's a rough. You said September, hota hai, right? It's November to December November was to December. the period. And wow. is let's let's pick up November twenty nineteen eighteen. Is that a good period to pick up? Uh, maybe twenty twenty. Okay, so November twenty twenty. This is COVID, right? Yeah. COVID has happened. We've all got used to the lockdown. We're all figuring out what life is. And appraisal would be online or in person? In person. Uh, no, off- offline. Online. Online. And uh, you go for your appraisal, and you don't get what you want. And uh, that was the most toughest appraisal. because the reason given was was very very unbelievable mm. because uh, so i i got uh, i got covid in the first batch the starting batch and that's where you know the things obviously impacted my work and everything now what happened when i recovered i was literally where i suppose i am on point 0 and after the covid recovery and everything i actually my performance went to four, level 4 or oh, when that high ha huh. and because they didn't have any reason to tell and anything in a way in a way nicely packaged they said ke your performance was not consistent throughout the year which pinched me a lot to that extent that i really literally fought kind of you know with some people and saying ki boss you are not penalizing me you are penalizing me because i i was unwell i had covid unwell, yeah, yeah. That's, so that was the most toughest thing when that 2021 yeah 20, 20, end of 20, 20 so 20, 20. 21 wala review was very painful so tabhi like and i had made your immediate managers or your hods it was a group i would say it was a team of people mm-hmm. who were mm-hmm. there in this process because uh, it was not one person who was uh, responsible it was a group of people but yes some key members had a larger input into the process so i would say that And when on, what is the next day like? So you've had this discussion, yeah. you fought, you've argued, you're living with it now, and you've been told you're not getting it. So then they said, okay, this year we'll prioritize. Oh, the next year we'll prioritize. Oh, the standard <laughs> goalie, right? <laughs> <laughs> But what is the next day like? You know. Oh, uh, that was that was an important most year mm-hmm. because. Uh, no, I'm talking about the next day. So you get your appraisals, and uh, I'm just trying to understand the process. So you have a meeting, you have a review meeting. There's an appraisal process, and after the appraisal process, you are told, "Sorry, this year no manager." 
and you said you're going to argue, you fought, whatever you do, uh, but they've already made up their mind. So what happens the next day? Even I made my mind. The next day itself? No, I made my mind that I'm not going to stretch myself. No, I'm saying what happens the next day in work? So you get an appraisal done yeah. and you're told you're not getting it. How? What's your motivation next morning to go to That's office? That's what. I made a mind that I'm going to work only 8.30 to 5. I'm not going to stretch beyond the working hours, which I was doing earlier. So that's where I started first time setting boundaries. If I'm not being respected. Then I'm not going to respect. Yeah. I'm not going to stretch out of way. Like there is no free work. or There is no, because even I need to be in that more professional. If you are more, prof, you are going in that. So that's where the kind of, uh, you know, things started uh, coming up, implementing in the life. Interesting. And so that, 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 I think that's one turning point in your career. I remember you mentioned to me earlier when we were talking before we went on, before we started recording, uh, you saw this series on... Uh, was it on N, uh, NDTV? Oh, that was, yes. Not I don't remember which TV, but that was way back. So that was about uh, Raz Pichli Janam ka. Yes, Dr. Tripti Jain. She's a very good friend. Tripti Jain, yes. yes. Fabulous so, person. So that was way long back. I don't even remember the year. But, but you that, saw it. And what, what impact did that have on your life? Oh, huge impact. So <clears throat> I was very mesmerized with that show. And uh, to that extent that um, I, I, I actually had a dream of meeting a past life regression therapist. And getting like a session for yourself? That was the next thing. But to first to meet, at least I felt that these are extremely rarest of rarest people. I don't know <laughs> where I'll find. I don't even know that time if they existed in Mumbai. And uh, how can they be approached? And I had absolutely no clue. And I never even uh, till that time. Uh, I, but yeah, somewhere in the back of the mind, and again in parallel, Doctor Brian with books had a lot, a lot of impact on yes, on many me. Lives, many masters. Yeah, and I read many books. Okay. So yeah, that was very interesting, and all the Bollywood stuff, all the movies we showed past lives had. Uh, of course, kitna cars, bhi, kitna movie ho, I I enjoyed watching those, like you know, for some reason because there was, it there connected. There was cars. Huh? There was cars by Rishi Kapoor. Yeah. There was Om Shanti, Om by Shah Rukh Khan. And then there was uh, uh, the recent one, uh, Rapta, mm -hmm. which was also one of the movie I enjoyed. Karan Arjun was again past Yeah, Arjun. Karan Arjun also was, was but that's still an older one. Oh, Karz was much older, right? Rishi Kapoor. Karz was <laughs> like the... Yes, I think that was the first movie that spoke about past Even Hema Malini, one movie was there. I yeah. don't remember the name, but yeah. And those songs and those things and some things somewhere, you know, it touched that nice. those theme was very touchy for me somewhere. And so now, now you're at this point where you've understood all of this. And you're at this point where you understand past lives, karma, because, you know, all of these movies spoke about karma, right? You're coming back to clear something off. And then here you are in your career and you're using the exact word you use, stuck. So what did you do? So that happened like... And you, sorry, you mentioned that you also took a couple of past life sessions. Yes, I was learning. Mm -hmm. By the time this 2020 thing happened, I was already into the process of learning mm -hmm. 2020 when I was learning a few courses and which had a self-work. And any reason to learn? Just curiosity. Yeah, because I was fascinated with this topic. Of course. So I, uh, so I was learning and then interesting stuff I saw in one of the sessions. And that's where I understood, oh, ye, ye game hai, you know, it is coming not from this life, from some other life and probably many lives. And that's the way the entanglement and, you know, those things. So then I said, OK, if I look from that perspective, now I understand my situation much more better. So can you share what happened in that? What did you see in a life? So uh, one of the past life opened and interestingly, did, I, did you go for a session for career? No, it was some other thing I don't remember honestly because it was a practice round where we used to do with my colleagues or with you know the supervisors there. So what happens in a past life regression session is two things you could ident identify a problem in your life that you want to work with and you use that as a case study to go back to a past life so I could identify uh, a simple thing why do I wear glasses and use that as a statement to work on or why am I stuck in my career and use that as a statement to go back to a past life. Vis-a-vis, -vis, when you study past life regression, uh, 
the students come together and work with each other more of just demos a typical format is where the teacher would introduce the topic of the day uh, pick up one student one of the students from the group and do a demonstration of how he would do the session and then the group is broken the group of students is broken up into pairs of two or three and they actually practice with each other and doing regression therapy on uh, one another to understand where could the cause be and and that's exactly what you were doing right absolutely and i never knew that the practice round session would open up something which was very interesting but they are live sessions right they're not yeah. like yeah so very what intense. opened up so interestingly a life opened up where i saw a set of bunch of people existing in my current life in the professional space in the same space and some similar theme was there in that life where we were on a mission okay. to discover something and then mission got uncom uh, not accomplished uh, uh, unaccomplished unaccomplished right. yeah were it stayed you, were you part of the mission yes and what what were you doing <laughs> so it was a strange thing we were discovering we were on our journey to discover something where mm-hmm. we like explorers did, yeah explore something kind of a secret project in that life or something right. and i was so shocked that how can you know seeing what, one what person what could the connection okay. be sorry what are you saying one, seeing one person in the past life is still was normal for me but that time i saw a bunch of people in the same connection in this life sitting in the same life there so that was a connection where i felt that okay even in this life we are entangled in a karma of work because that time we were on a mission work wise mission here also we were on a mission i mean every company has a mission right yeah. Yeah. and every department has a mission absolutely so you saw these people uh and they're the same people who said the bunch of people Most who sit on sit on your of, office out of the 80% people were the same wow and what what was what really happened in that life how did the mission end it failed it failed and how how does that 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 life got connected to this life mukta probably here also we were on a mission and uh, there the unful- unfulfilled mission probably led us to entangle because we all we were a team then and we were on a mission but that didn't land well so probably we came here together again with a tree team an and to land mission yeah and that was an entangle so even there it was it was sort of destined to fail and over here i don't know for the others but it was sort of failing for you because you weren't getting what you want failing or being in that entanglement or the same pattern repeating from that life into this life where we are still together like you know bounded and then it it, it was like so much heavy entanglement because we were we are not able to move and this came in the that junction of the time where i was in 50 50 to leave the organization or to stay back and when this session opened up and cleared i was after that session i was 100% sure and what what year was this <laughs> this was 2022 jan where i saw this session mm-hmm. and at the same time almost in 15 days i got my appraisal result and i at this time i was very sure if i again see no promotion <laughs> i made up my mind because then it came to my self respect not being acknowledged not being seen or made visible now it was coming to the kind of okay boss this is this is the end like now i need to step out so that's where the decision came where it was very very strongly and <clears throat> without even having anything in opportunity in hand i was very clear that i want to move out so did you move out after or before your appraisals after appraisal after appraisal within a month's time i put my papers and the, you yet hadn't got the promotion that you wanted so they had been pulling it on for so long yeah and how did it feel once you moved on once you put in your papers I really felt very very free because now you know as I moved out I felt okay that I also got that learning probably I was so blinded with that designation that I had op- I have always been obsessed with that title and after this session opened after I went through a lot of healing journeys myself and when I am right now and when I moved down I felt what was i doing i was so so obsessed with the title and the title in the larger scheme of thing is just a small dot but it was a turning point in my life but it it was so important to you right it was so important that you stayed on from almost 2017 18 till 2022 five years of your life 
You stayed on holding on. And it's your reality that you want it. And I think that's what I, be, I keep saying. If you want something, there's no logic as to why you want it. Absolutely. And once you moved out, how did things change for you? Did you ever feel mission accomplished after that life? If you had to say those words, how did it feel? Because from that, you said you were on a mission in that earlier life. I felt I freed myself from the whatever the karma I had with those set of people. I felt much lighter, honestly. Like, I really felt, I my things got so shifted that whatever anger, whatever things, negativity I carried, it just melted away. It just melted away. And when out of the sight, out of the mind, it just actually happened. So I felt much, much lighter when I kind of removed those people or when the things were sorted or where the entanglement was, you know, completely uh, released. I really felt very light. And that, that session was the one turning point for you. Absolutely. Interesting. And how has life been for you after you've quit and you've moved on? How are things shaping up for you now? So it is very interesting because uh, after those two courses, I was doing a lot of self-work. And then interestingly, I found a uh, family constellation. And when I found this good platform, I uh, attended a couple of sessions, like almost 50, 60 sessions. I was so mesmerized just by attending the session. I felt I was healing every, every bit of it. And when I got opportunity through joining hands to learn and, you know, to, uh, you know, if you want to, you know, take it up as a, uh, as a course, I grabbed that opportunity. And uh, today I think I am uh, really happy for my decision because again, it came like a, you know, ye hai, plate saja ke rakha hai, le lo. like, you know, it just came the right point of time, you know, in my life. And after that, I see the life has changed abruptly where uh, <clears throat> now it's almost 100 sessions down the wow. line in last six months of the family constellation and uh, it has given me a lot of a uh, lot of change in the way I process things the way I am now in what space I am than I was like two three years ago I would say so manager or therapist what's a better designation I have <laughs> really left that you know the thing but what I feel is you know title was important but even the acknowledgement for what you are and now I feel I get that acknowledgement for what I am doing what I'm loving to do and where I I don't need a title title but yes I can see that I see that respect I see that acknowledgement I see that visibility of what things I bring on table and that's most important so at the end of the, the day. client gives you the feedback that how yeah. you have you've been contributing to their change yeah Interesting. Past lives or constellations? I'm doing all three. Okay. So. Yeah, but constellations is something uh, which is very interesting and uh, which brings a different perspective mm -hmm. because this is a mod very, uh, very uh, unique modality where it is not only one on one. So this modality, even people who just want to see and come, they are also benefited. So it has its unique USP and the other therapies have their own U USP. So I also... But you have to choose one. <laughs> I cannot choose one because okay. uh, I also take self-work on in, with respect to all the three modalities. So they bring different layer clearing. So yeah, all three. City life or farming? City life. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Thank you so much, Mukda, for taking time out. Thank you, Hitesh. Uh, I think it takes great courage to come up and share your story. When you've been in the corporate world, it sort of is a, it just pulls you in. And we're not telling people not to be in the corporate world, but we're just telling them to work on themselves. So when you work on themselves, your journey, whether you work in corporates, whether you choose to pursue any passion, your journey of life becomes much easier and simpler. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having that courage. Thank you so much, Hitesh, for calling me. Thank, Thank you. you so much once again. Thank you.